So I want to thank Jeffrey Leon for having me on. Uh, start my biz. I'm a big entrepreneur. Um, I, I, I love it. I love business. When you have an idea, go for it. It's my business. Sell yourself. Build your audience. It's build your business. following. And love what you do. If this is just something that you just like doing on the side, this ain't for you. Watch it. You'll learn something. Hey, what's up, Kinfolk family and friends? It's your boy, Jeffrey Leon, and I'm back with It's My Business. And for those of you who don't know what this is all about, it's about inspiring you to start your own business. That's right. Just like I did right here, right now, this is my business. So, without further delay, we're going to go into phase two of filmmakers, directors, producers, for those of you who are inspired to be one. Um, we're going to start with our friend David Van Wee, who's a filmmaker, a multi-award winning filmmaker for his documentary called Detroit Under Stress. So for those of you who haven't seen it, please check it out. But I'm going to let Mr. David Van Wee tell you all about it. Thank you, David, for joining me. I greatly appreciate it here on It's My Business. My biz. I'm a big entrepreneur. Um, I, I, I love it. I love business. When you have an idea, go for it. Go for it. No one's going to do it for you, but go out there and put your head down and go for it. Any uh, podcasts and any information you can get to encourage you, um, like Start My Biz, watch these programs, watch what they're doing, listen to what they're saying, take the information and go for it. Go do it. I greatly appreciate it. Why don't you tell us about your project and how things are going? Uh, so my name is David Van Wee. Uh, I am with the film Detroit Under Stress. I'm the producer and director. Uh, I also wrote it. Uh, Detroit Under Stress is the film about a 1970s uh, decoy police unit in Detroit. It's uh, arguably one of the most controversial police units ever created. Uh, in Detroit in 1970, the crime was through the roof. You had a murder rate that was up 300% and you had a robbery rate that was up 600% and no end in sight. So the chief at that time is Chief Nichols and he decides that they need to do something. He calls his top people in and they come up with the idea that they're going to create a decoy police unit of volunteer policemen, no extra pay, and they are going to dress as any ordinary citizen and wander the worst parts of Detroit where this crime is happening and try and get robbed so that they can arrest these people. To try and get robbed? That don't sound very good. So what do they do? They go out on the street, they start wandering the worst parts, and of course they start getting robbed. Now the problem was is that when you got robbed in Detroit, the odds are they were going to kill you because they didn't want to leave a witness. And so they worked in crews of two to four men. So your backup guys of one to three guys were arguably about 100 yards away. Now, when you get approached by the robber, you're closer than you and I are. You have a gun at your head, you have a knife at your stomach, and you know that as soon as you hand them your wallet, in all likelihood, they're gonna shoot you. So they reach behind for their hideaway gun, and they start shooting first. They started killing everybody. Now, these were all bad guys, if you will, um, but it becomes a hot button issue the racial tensions in Detroit had been bad since almost the inception of Detroit from riots starting back in 1863, 1943, 1967, the big one we all know about. And in every one of those in Detroit, the National Guard has to be called in. So these tensions keep building and building. And now you have a police department that is predominantly white in 1971. And the crime is happening in the black communities. And it just turns into a tinderbox. And David, you say this is a true story? And this is the true story of what happened. We go through every shooting that happened, uh, and we tell the story for the first time with the stress officers. Uh, the unit was called Stress, Stop the Robberies, Enjoy Safe Streets, and they have not talked to anybody in almost 50 years. The only thing you'll see out there is from the community side, the anti-stress movement. And so for the first time, we hear their side of the story. Why were they out there? How did they feel about what they were doing? What really happened during those shootings? Um, we did Freedom of Information Acts on most of the shootings. Some of the real controversial ones were lost files that we could not get a hold of. 
Well, that's not surprising. So tell me, how long did it take you to complete this particular project? After three and a half years, we are thrilled to be here at the Chandler International Film Festival. Um, we are now a multi-award winning documentary and uh, we're thrilled to bring this story to everybody because it's so relevant even today. Uh, the police and community relations are still poor at best. Um, and it's interesting that after 50, almost 50 years, we find ourselves almost in the same situation. Well, let's continue to pray for the best. How are things going for you out there at the Chandler Film Festival? Uh, we had our screening last night. Uh, it was uh, uh, fantastic. We had a wonderful time, great crowd. Uh, lots of good questions afterwards. Everyone was respectful. We've had some screenings where things got a little heated. Um, but uh, here at the Chandler International Film Festival, we had a great Q&A afterwards. Everyone was very respectful of everyone else's opinion and, and uh, the information that was presented. And um, just thrilled with this project. I appreciate you having me here. So what inspiring words do you have for filmmakers looking to get into this business? Uh, do your research. Be thorough in your research. Uh, go into any film project knowing that you are going to be doing everything. You think you're going to hire it out, you think you're going to hire an editor, you think you're going to hire a writer, you think you're going to hire your actors, and you think they're going to actually do their job, forget it. That's not going to happen. You are going to end up doing everything. So know going in that you're going to have to wear all these hats to get this project done and know that it's not going to be a month, it's not going to be three months, it's not going to be six months. If you're going to do it right, it's going to take you a year plus to actually get this thing done. So go into it knowing you're going to do the work, knowing the challenges you have ahead, do your research, and get your head down for a long trip. So what do you think are the best ways to showcase your film? Once you have a completed project, the best course of action is to start on the film festival circuit. And you want to go ahead and submit to ones that fit your your genre and your category and your story. And that takes some research as well. Go through there's a, lots of great websites, uh, Film Freeway, uh, Without a Box, those are the two big ones. Um, and you go through and you start looking at all the film festivals and what fits your film. And then you enter and you hope to get some selections. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We've uh, been going now for five months uh, with the film festivals. We've gotten 14 official selections all over the country two film of the festivals, one best documentary. Uh, we've gotten a platinum award from the uh, uh, International Independent F Film Awards. So we've been very fortunate, but you, you, and it, you have to have a small budget for that uh, to do the submissions. That's the next course of action because once you start getting recognized, that's when distributors will look. Um, at the end of the day, if you, you haven't had any hits but you still want to put your film out, uh, I highly recommend uh, distribber.com. If you go to them, they are an aggregator for Netflix, iTunes, Hulu, uh, Amazon, and you can pay them to distribute it through those channels. Thank you, David. Those are some great words of inspiration. But before I let you go, I have one more question to ask you, and that is, with all your success at these film festivals, did you happen to go to film school at all? No. Now, I say that very arrogantly, <laughs> and, and I don't mean any disrespect. I have absolutely no business being in this industry. I have had no training. I've never been to film school. I, I started out, um, I was on the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters, and I thought their, hor their commercials were horrible. And then thinking, yeah, these, these commercials are horrible, I thought, I, I got an idea for a commercial. And so I had went out, I hired a crew, I did a, a, a casting call, and I knew what I wanted it to look like. So I sat down with some professionals, and said, here's what I want it to look like, here's how I want it shot, and we did all of that, and we got a great product, and they hired me to do five more. So that's how it starts. Um, a good friend of mine, good friend of the family, his name is David Park, and you probably have never heard that name. David Park is one of the most famous movie trailer people around. He passed away uh, this, this last year. Um, he did uh, The Avengers. He did uh, Peach Dragon, Iron Man. Uh, any, almost any Disney uh, product. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was his big. He did all those trailers. Um, absolutely no film school. When he built a trailer, when he started out, uh, he would submit it, and all of these uh, production houses would get all the trailers in for all these different companies, and they would look at the trailer and they go, oh, he went to NYU. Oh, he went to Columbia. 
oh, he went to this film school, he went to that film school. And David Park's trailer would come up and they would just sit there puzzled. And they'd go, who is this guy? And they loved his work. And he, he, he was unbelievably successful, had his own, his own house to build all the trailers, had his own editing people. Um, one of the most successful and um, one of the best. Thank you for taking the time to come on to the show of It's My Business, and congratulations on your award at the Chandler Film Festival as well. I appreciate having me here. It's my business. It's my business. It's my business. It's my business.